What's up guys, Hounish here, and today we're going to jump in with a bunch of pretty interesting Destiny 2 stuff to talk about. So for any folks playing a lot of Gambit, Sleeper Simulant has been a topic of conversation. Bungie have a few things to say about Sleeper. They're definitely working on a few changes. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about something pretty interesting in Dreaming City, a kind of chest farm that you can use, as well as a secret boss that you can spawn. I also want to talk about some future pursuits in Dreaming City, potentially linked to exotics as well. We're going to take a few looks at some more curated god roll weapons from Bungie, some facts about the Malfeasance hand cannon, a new crucible map coming today after reset, and a bunch of other topics to round up guys, so if you do enjoy the video, a rating below is very much appreciated. If you're new around here, be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see a lot more D2 content. I do cover everything right here on the channel, gotta say a massive thank you to you guys for 300k subscribers. I do plan on doing something for 300k, obviously it's pretty busy at the moment, but I'll keep you guys posted. Either way, thank you so much for the support. Without any further delay, let's get into the video. So first up, the conversation about Sleeper Simulant in Gambit has been a pretty rife one. A lot of different opinions about this. Now Bungie have come out and said, we're aware of reports that Sleeper Simulant feels too strong in Gambit. The Sandbox team is looking at potential changes to address this. Our goal is to retain the strength of the weapon, but to tune it so it doesn't feel to be the only viable power weapon in Gambit. Stay tuned. So obviously Bungie are looking at some changes. Josh Hamrick did add on to this and said that Sandbox has been operating with the goal of not employing nerfs when there are other methods of tweaking the game so that there isn't just one correct choice. That said, nerfs will still be needed from time to time. We promise to be judicious when and where we choose to employ them. So it sounds like some kind of nerf actually potentially is going to happen to Sleeper Simulant. A couple of brief opinions about the weapon. I do believe that it's kind of crushing variety a bit inside of Gambit. Obviously it can be a pretty frustrating weapon to play against. The times where I personally find it most annoying is when somebody spawns into the map, you get an invader, and there are a lot of occasions where you become immediately aware of their position. So on the steps right here. I see that we're getting invaded. My radar lights up behind me. We've just cleared these enemies so I know that that is the invader and before I have any time to move or reposition myself, take cover, I've immediately been sniped by the sleeper. Now of course that could happen with any weapon. Somebody could do that with a sniper rifle or a linear fusion rifle but I guess the problem is that sleeper does it very quickly and relatively easily in comparison to other weapons. I believe doing that with the sniper would absolutely require more skill and if you manage to hit that shot you know, super quickly, then you'd absolutely deserve the kill. That's just my personal opinion. One potential way of fixing this that I can think of, not that I'm a sandbox designer of course, is maybe adding a crit only modifier inside of PvP. So if you use Sleeper Simulant, you have to hit the head. I don't know how much control they have over this, whether they can do that in PvP, but not in PvE. But if they could, then essentially they could not affect the weapon in PvE content, but adjust it to require headshots in PvP. At the same time though, it is a heavy weapon, so you would be removing a bit of its power, but it feels like potentially the sleeper is going to take some kind of hit here, so I'd be curious to hear what you guys think anyway. Do you think there needs to be a change in the first place? Do you have any ideas as to what Bungie could do with the weapon? Next though, I wanted to talk about something interesting right here. So in the Dreaming City, in a couple of different areas, you will find these kind of rings of stone. There are some in the Devalian Mists right here. So up near the big door, you'll find one in the middle. There is one off to the right and then one off to the left hand side as well. And from time to time, these will actually start to glow. And when this happens, you can spawn in a boss that drops a triumph and a couple of chests when you take him down. And the interesting thing here though, is that when this boss spawns, any ads that you kill will actually spawn two chests that reward tokens and things like that for Dreaming City. So the loot isn't absolutely crazy, but there's a bit of a glitch because any of the ads are capable of spawning these and not just the boss. So if you keep the boss alive, you can continuously spawn a bunch of chests. Some people have actually farmed this, but it is very tricky to do because if you get someone else in the instance that decides, hey, I'm going to kill that boss, then obviously you've got a bit of a problem. Equally, if someone else is killing enemies in a different area in that instance, they'll actually be spawning chests in, or at least that's what we think is happening because when you spawn too many chests, some of them will despawn. So if there's just three of you, of course, you can kill a couple of ads, pick up those chests, kill some more ads, and it won't be too buggy. But with other players, it gets pretty bizarre. But it is essentially a kind of chest loot cave 
style farm going on right here. I have heard reports of folks getting cool legendaries and stuff with random rolls, Reverie Dawn gear and stuff like that. Obviously the legendaries do have a lower drop rate, but when you're getting so many chests, you do have the possibility of getting some decent loot. But the idea behind this is that you actually kill the boss, he spawns the two chests and you do get a triumph when he goes down as well. So just an interesting shout to a potentially useful glitch or a potentially just weird and not super useful glitch. It depends how many players are around, but also that triumph as well. There are other interesting things that we haven't figured out. I'm not sure if other folks have figured them, but in the gardens of Asilla, there are three of these kind of pools or puddles, I guess is what they're more like. Not really sure what they do. We tried standing in them all at the same time. We tried being ascendant. Seems like they're going to do something, but I'm not entirely sure what that is. Of course, there are a lot of secrets in the Dreaming City. The curse that began when the Last Wish raid is apparently going to spread and worsen over time. And of course, that will be linked to new content that we get. We got some new content after the raid was completed, where we got some new powerful gear, some secret missions that appear to be part of a quest line. There is going to be another one similar to the Broken Courier, and this will be Dark Monastery. This is another mission that kind of stems from one of Petra's bounties. On top of this, some folks have reported seeing a quest icon pop up, just like we saw in the Broken Courier mission. So when we completed it, a quest icon popped up on the left-hand side, but then nothing was available on the director. And it looks like that is potentially time-gated content. So it's basically saying you've done the first step, the UI is showing that you're eligible for the next step, but then when you get back to the director, it's not available because it's actually locked away for now. And either way, when completing the Corsair kind of badge items that you have in your inventory, so Corsair down, each of these will give a hint to the location. So it may say Chamber, and that would be the Chamber of Starlight Lost Sector, or it might say Harbinger, and that would be the Harbinger's Seclude. And in these areas, you'll find an Awoken Corsair that you can collect the badge from, and then you go back to one of the Corsairs hidden in the cave. So there is some in Devalian Mists right here on the left-hand side, and you can turn in the badge. And on the next daily reset, you'll actually get another one. And in total, there are six. I've only done four up until now. But folks also reported after completing the sixth one, they do get a new weekly bounty. It only rewards legendary gear, but after completing gear, you also get a quest icon on the left-hand side. So it may be a good shout to actually start clearing some of these out in case they are linked to future content. Of course, if you've already done them, you should be good. I will link a Reddit thread below that has a breakdown of how these essentially work. Yesterday I spoke about some curated god rolls that folks had actually been getting. So Bungie have made a few weapons that drop with a specific set of perks and you'll know when you've got one of these because it will drop as a tier 10 masterwork. So when you get one, this means that it's a role that Bungie have actually curated. There were a bunch of raid weapons I spoke about yesterday, but some folks sent me some here. So Samuel on Twitter sent me the vouch safe that they got. You can see it's a masterwork tier 10. You've got Firefly or Dragonfly. Sorry, I'll never get used to these new names. You've also got Zen Moment. That is a curated role of the vouch safe. They also have unique shaders on them. So the shader on this weapon will kind of glow differently to others. So if you put the same shader on a different weapon, you wouldn't necessarily see that effect, or at least some of these weapons can do that. You can get the Twilight Oath from Dreaming City with Snapshot Sights, Box Breathing. That's pretty interesting. That's another curated roll. And that was from Levi Jeans who sent me that clip. And even Nightfall specific loot. So Mindbender's Ambition right here with Opening Shot, Rampage. Once again, a tier 10 masterwork. And you can just make out that kind of glowing shader on the weapon. Again, you don't seem to get that with the normal Normal version. So pretty interesting stuff. Look out for any tier 10 masterwork weapons that drop. They could just be a special curated role. Now though, let's round up a few other things. Bungie say Iron Banner returns tomorrow, that is actually today on the 18th of September, with a reprised crucible map called Convergence. If you look at the image, this is actually Pantheon from Destiny 1. So the good old sniper map is coming back. And if you're playing Iron Banner today, then hopefully you'll get a couple of games on this new map, which is pretty cool. Also about the new Gambit map, of course, this is the one that takes place in Dreaming City. A few people have pointed out, including one of my friends, Easy, that the moats you get here are actually slightly green, which is pretty interesting. There is a definite difference between these and the moats that you would get on other maps. It could be the kind of hue or the coloring on the map, potentially, but I'm not sure it is. I actually think they are a slightly different color. So it's possible that this map could be linked to Malfeasance at some point. It could be linked to the Malfeasance boss that you have to spawn in. Although this is only loose speculation. Now, when I've 
spoken about malfeasance. A lot of people have said, people already have this gun. You get it after two gambit resets. What are you on about? Now, actually, nobody has this gun. So the gameplay that has been posted on YouTube from folks actually came from Bungie. So I know that Mtashed, Rick Kakis, a whole bunch of folks got to use the malfeasance and they posted reviews on the weapon. So a lot of people are saying that this gun is actually available and that people already have it. But unfortunately, that is not the case. There's been a lot of hearsay about how you get the weapon. You have to reset Gambit rank twice and all that kind of stuff. I know people that have reset it five times. The actual first part of the quest for Gambit will require folks to hunt down Callum's grave. Callum is obviously a character in the lore related to the Shadows of Yore, and at Callum's grave, he actually has components that are capable of producing the weapon malfeasance. And so while there may be hidden triggers for the quest, it doesn't look like they will be inside of the Gambit mode necessarily. Callum's grave could be anywhere in the entire system. It could in fact require a mission to start the quest, and it could be something that everyone gets at the same time, or there could be a additional requirements. We simply don't know, but the fact of the matter is that nobody currently has malfeasance. All of the gameplay that you're seeing is pre-launch promotional material, essentially. So I just wanted to clarify that, guys, because I've seen a lot of comments, there's a lot of confusion and hearsay about malfeasance and what's going on with it. The reality is, if people had the quest, then there will be guides, there will be screenshots of people getting it. So anyway, that's a roundup of a bunch of stuff, guys. Let me know what you think about Sleeper Simulant, the new Crucible map coming in the Iron Banner, or any of that interesting Dreaming City stuff. If you have enjoyed the video, though, a like is very much appreciated below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe to see a lot more D2 content. I appreciate all the support recently, guys. I appreciate you tuning in every day. Have fun with the weekly reset later on. But for now, I will catch you guys very soon.